Okay, so I want to share with you my story, my personal story of how I was diagnosed with myasthenia gravis. Um, last March, um, I was teaching online and my classes are about, they're pretty long, like five to six hours straight and I would get breaks in between. And um, after my third class, I started in my mind, it sounded like lisping, like, I was like, okay. And I was fighting hard to really enunciate my words. And I can even hear my students via Zoom, like talking to their mom, like saying, why is she lisping? Why is she lisping? Um, so I, I didn't think anything of it because I wrapped my class and I had five minutes um, to like take a break and breathe and grab something before my last class started. Um, each class is about, um, an hour and a half to two hours. And um, I was fine after five minutes. So I started my class. And then an hour and a half into that class, I started lisping again. And that's when I was like, okay, hmm, let me just check this here. Am I having, am I feeling anxious? You know, am I feeling like tingling down my arm? Is this a stroke? What's happening? So I just happened to mention that, okay, guys, sorry about my lisping. I'm a little bit afraid of what's going on. And a mom overheard, and then she had written something in the chat, like, are you okay? And the fact that she was concerned got me more concerned. So um, I left. I, I wasn't able to finish my last class, and I drove myself to the emergency room. Um, you know, as I start talking, I can feel that my myasthenia gravis is starting to kick in. I took medication beforehand. It lasts about four hours. So you can actually see it happening real time and you'll hear it too. Anyway, uh, drove myself to the emergency room and, um, right away I was diagnosed with a TSA. Um, can't remember the long term, but it's a mini stroke, which fucked me up. I was so scared. It's like, wait, what? A mini stroke so of course my whole family was concerned I was scared um, and long story short this happened two more times um, where I just had to go to the emergency room and each time I was diagnosed it was diagnosed as a TSA or a mini stroke although all of the workups and they did major major workups on me each time showed that I had no there was no evidence of me having a mini stroke. So I was really frustrated trying to figure out what was going on. And in the meantime, I was afraid to speak because I didn't want it to happen again. When it first happened, I had to, I was frustrated because when I went to urgent care, no one would believe me because I didn't have any proof. It's like, well, you're talking fine right now. I'm like, yeah, but I wasn't before and they wouldn't take my word for it. And that was so frustrating. So the third time I got really smart before, um, and it, it, this comment would happen with each physician that would come in and talk to me. It's like, it fucking happened. I know it's not happening right now, but it happened and blah, blah, blah. So the third time it happened, I filmed myself and I just did like a speech from class, from acting class that I was working on. And of course it caught everything. So this time I was able to show all the physicians. Um, but still they were like, then why are you not? So you're fine now because you're not. And I'm like, when I go home, it's going to happen again. So they had suggested that I go see a neurologist in the city, like outside of where I am, like go to Mount Sinai or, you know, the big, the big hospitals. So, okay. Um, after all the trial and error and meeting people, I found uh, it was confirmed that I did not have a mini stroke. That was just a default diagnosis because they didn't know what I had. But it was, it was confirmed that I did not have a mini stroke. Um, and then when I finally found a neurologist, he said that I have myasthenia gravis. And to confirm that, we did blood tests to check for specific antibodies. And... I tested positive for all of those antibodies um, that determined that you have myasthenia gravis. So, um, 
it was it was heartbreaking for me because I had just came I just came back to acting class like right after COVID started I I went back to my dream um, after years and years and years I thought it was time and it was time and to have this hit me like oh great <laughs> now I can't speak I can't be a consistent actor and you know consistently read this uh, you know perform something without sounding like I have a speech impediment <clears throat> and as a singer oh my god I can't even I can't even tell you how it affects my singing like I, I feel like I hit I hit the ceiling um halfway through my range I can go up I can go high to a certain extent but um if I don't vocalize and I'm unhealthy and I just sing those high notes without you know, vocally stretching, I can do it. But once I start vocalizing and doing my exercises, I like go halfway in my exercise and it's like really frustrating. Anyway, um, I had a hard time looking for other people. I was desperately seeking artists and voice teachers, um, experience in myasthenia gravis, actors who have myasthenia gravis. I couldn't find anybody. There really wasn't a lot out there. Um, but I did connect with great organizations, the uh, Maestrinia Gravis Foundation of America, and there are a couple others. Lots of information, overwhelming at times. Um, but eventually, my doctor, uh, we, we landed on a medication called um, Mestinon that works for me. I take it only when I need it. It works for about four hours and the side effects, the normal side effects are uh, diarrhea, um, nausea, and those things I don't, I haven't experienced. Again, I don't take it every day. I want to. Um, and I booked a gig where I had a full script and I had to like uh, announce and host and everything. And I was like, oh my God, it was eight hours. So this was the first time um that i had to that that i would be actually performing with this medication knowing that it lasts every four hours and you're supposed to take it every six hours so it was uh, i had high anxiety whether uh, whether or not you know i was gonna pull this off and like come through for my gig but it worked it worked for me so hope is out there you are not alone again if you're a performer and or if you have issues with speaking, chewing, swallowing, and you get really tired, then please reach out. Um, I'm really serious about this. For those of you, um, I'm here. So let's talk. That's my spiel. Happy June.